Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be covering a topic that I have been excited to cover for some time because today it is all about early time restricted eating. And that is because by strategically planning what time of the day you are consolidating your eating window to, research shows that this type of meal planning can garner additional success and health benefits. And this is done in place of giving yourself the green light to keep your window open going into the evening. And if you're new to my channel, I have lost 50 pounds so far through intermittent fasting with plans to lose more. So I get excited about diving into the research to help in planning out my weight loss approach and how best to achieve my goals. Today we're covering the research that made me sit up and pay attention as well as the additional benefits that ETRE has to offer. So let's get started. <laughs> everyone, before we get started, please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button as well as tap that notification bell so that you'll know when I have exciting and helpful information headed your way. Let's kick this video off with a study that demonstrates exactly what early time restricted eating has to offer. And it is one that I enjoy digging into because it was a very well constructed, rigorous, randomized control trial in which researchers examined the effects of early time restricted eating in individuals with prediabetes. These individuals condensed their eating window to a six hour period, which they designed to end by 2 p.m. By comparison, the control group was able to eat within a 12 hour window that started at 8 a.m and extended through 8 p.m. This study took place over a five-week period, followed by a seven-week washout period to do additional follow-up testing. Individuals in this study were carefully monitored, and all participants were provided with identical meals with mealtime supervision to factor in compliancy. And here's another interesting factor. Individuals were provided with sufficient caloric intake to maintain their weight, and this was done in order to remove the theory that any health benefits experienced may simply be associated with the weight loss component and their hypothesized theory that the timing alone would yield better results between these two groups was confirmed. And the component that researchers attributed this success to was that individuals in the ETRE group were eating meals supported by the circadian system. Yes, our body's energy metabolism is interwoven with and influenced by our circadian rhythm. And you may be wondering why this is. Well, there is a direct feedback loop within the body that is regulated by the circadian rhythm, which determines how the body takes up and utilizes glucose, lipids, and the process of energy metabolism. In fact, in a study out of the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, researchers found that individuals experienced two and a half times more of their diet-induced thermogenesis following breakfast when compared to dinner. Additionally, the study also confirmed that having a larger meal for breakfast resulted in better glucose metabolism. And this was confirmed by researchers in our early time restricted study in which they described that the body's thermic response to food intake is seen best in the morning as opposed to in the afternoon or the evening, which coincides with the saying, eat like a king or queen for breakfast and a popper for dinner, which makes sense because our bodies are designed to slow down as the day progresses in preparation for rest and sleep. And eating later into the night gives the body mixed signals, basically telling it to ramp up when it's designed to go into rest and repair mode. So let's talk about the results. And the first one up to bat is the improvement that individuals experienced with insulin resistance. And the results are pretty exciting because as we know, insulin imbalance is one of the main drivers of obesity as well as insulin resistance. What researchers found is that participants experienced a significant reduction in their fasting insulin levels, as well as their insulin levels 60 to 90 minutes post meal. And here is another exciting finding. Researchers found that even during the seven week washout period in which individuals went back to their previous way of eating, they continued to experience benefits in which they saw that their insulin levels were about 25% less post meal, which means that individuals continue to experience insulin sensitivity when they stepped out of early time restricted eating. Great news, and it demonstrates continued effects, which is wonderful. If you get off track for the day or the weekend for that matter, individuals oftentimes have the mindset, well, I just ruined my diet 
is so I might as well just keep going. And before they know it, they have completely derailed their efforts. But this study demonstrates that you can pick it back up and keep right on going without starting back at square one because you have a leg up advantage in that your body has already become more insulin sensitive through this form of time restricted eating. And these results were seen after only five weeks. This study exemplifies that it can be done even in the absence of weight loss. I just want to stress that because that fact is amazing. And I'm not saying that weight loss isn't also a benefit associated with early time restricted eating. Another advantage that researchers found is that participants also experienced an increase in B cell responsiveness. Why is this important? Because the beta cells within the pancreas are responsible for secreting insulin in response to circulating glucose levels post meals, which is what we want to happen so that glucose is shuttled appropriately into the cell to be taken up as energy for cellular processes. However, as individuals develop insulin resistance, it becomes a problem of supply and demand. Meaning that because the body is not as sensitive to the insulin that is being provided by the pancreas, in turn, the pancreas needs to crank out more and more insulin to reach the threshold in which the body recognizes that it has what it needs. Problematic? Absolutely. Because keeping up with the process of cranking out higher levels of insulin is hard on the pancreas, and it can ultimately result in the development of diabetes, not to mention the development of metabolic syndrome along the way. And what the study showed is that the beta cell within the pancreas were responding and functioning more optimally. And that is exactly what we want. The next reason that ETRE brings the wow factor is the impact that it has on hunger. According to the research, participants taking part in ETRE reported feeling more full throughout the evening after they closed their eating window. And it is important to note that the individuals in the ETRE group had practiced on average 18 hours of fasting prior to joining the study. So the concept of fasting was not new to them. And we know that generally speaking, intermittent fasting results in regulation of satiety signals, which help to manage our hormones that stir up our appetite, as well as help us to recognize when we're full. And these individuals still reported a significant difference. Not only did they report that they had decreased desire to eat later on in the day, but they also experienced a decreased capacity to eat, reporting increased stomach fullness, meaning that they were unable to eat more, which researchers pointed out may facilitate weight loss. The next reason that early time restricted eating is so great is because of its impact on blood pressure. What researchers found was that after just five weeks of doing early time restricted eating, participants had a reduction in their blood pressure that was equivalent to what is seen in individuals taking an ACE inhibitor in the treatment of hypertension. What is an ACE inhibitor? It is a medication that is amongst those that are first line recommended in the treatment of high blood pressure. And this is something that I get excited about as a nurse practitioner. When we're talking about a rigorously done study examining the benefits of intermittent fasting, and we're seeing results such is this, when individuals can potentially avoid progression of a condition to the point that it warrants medication management, or they can come off medication because yes, lifestyle interventions, which we highly promote, can make a significant difference, which allows individuals to come off their medication. Providers absolutely leave the room with a boost in their step, knowing that these individuals are potentially avoiding complications associated with things that may be experienced with hypertension and metabolic syndrome, like experiencing kidney dysfunction or failure and heart attack or a stroke. Not to mention that they're sidestepping having to deal with potential side effects associated with medications. Because of course, no medication is completely absent of the possibility of side effects. Clearly something that I feel passionate about. Okay, the next one up is the influence that ETRE has on oxidative stress. And why is this important? Because in surplus or as a result of imbalance, which we see through environmental exposure to toxins, heavy metals, and xenobiotics, just to mention a few, oxidative stress results in cell and tissue damage. And it can also impact cellular function and can result in mutations, which may lead to cancer formation. And what the study found is that ETRE results in less lipid peroxidation. Generally speaking, this is the process of oxidative 
degradation of lipids, which involves free radicals. And by downgrading this process, researchers stated it decreases the likelihood of developing things such as atherosclerosis. And this is important because the buildup of atherosclerosis within our vessels can rupture or make clot, and it can ultimately impede blood flow to our vital organs such as our heart, or atherosclerotic plaques can become dislodged and travel through our circulatory system, resulting in heart attack or a stroke. So reducing the risk of atherosclerosis is a wonderful health advantage. I also took a look at another study in which researchers examined the benefits of early time-restricted eating on individuals versus midday time-restricted eating as well as that of late time-restricted eating. And what they found is that those consolidating their eating hours to the morning with a cutoff of 3 p.m. experienced benefits such as decreased insulin resistance, an improvement in fasting plasma glucose, a reduction in body fat and body mass, as well as a decrease in inflammation and an increase in the microbiome biome diversity when compared to the other groups. Okay, everyone, I hope that this information has been super helpful to those of you that have been questioning, what is the advantage to early time restricted eating? And how can I better maximize my results? And something important to note is that researchers recognize that having dinner earlier in the day might be a little tricky when it comes to balancing work schedules and family life. However, they recommended extending studies to include stretching out that window of time so that individuals can eat a little bit later into the afternoon and to see if this would impact their results. I agree, additional research would be great. In the meantime, the general consensus is that consolidating your eating window to daylight hours allows you to work alongside your circadian rhythm to your benefit. And for those of you that are curious about the other forms of time-restricted eating and what they have to offer, as well as the difference between time-restricted eating and extended fasting, please be sure to check out this playlist. As always, please don't forget to like and subscribe, as well as hit that notification bell. They can't see you over there, come here. And let me know down below what you would like to hear more about. I'm always interested in covering the topics and questions that you want to hear more about. And for those of you that are big fans of Windsor, feel free to check out his new family-friendly channel where it's all about Windsor. I'll see you in the next one.